Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Just a little addendum to the intro, letting you know that this Saturday at 9pm GMT, I will be doing a stream where I will be opening up some Magic the Gathering booster packs. This will be in preparation for the big Warhammer TCG box opening that will be happening sometime at the end of the month. I hope to see you all there. The Messenger, written by Looney123. The Empress was nervous. A very un-Empress-like thing to be, but it was warranted. A few aides formed a swarm of activity around her as she walked through the hall, Mori furrowing her face. Updates of the human envoys progre- Wait. Reports on the process of sur- No. Complaints and concerns from high-ranking family- Highest- Help me, she dismayed privately. This day couldn't get much worse. Bracing herself, she made the final approach to the central enclave. If she were going to face those damned humans, she could at least give herself whatever modicum of appearances she could muster. A ten-foot-tall staircase, framed and covered by a layer of solid calcium, 48, to the throne would do. Besides, the bioshields and the escape mechanism would steady her nerves. Her aides continued to hustle and bustle around the enclave, her mind continuing to hustle and bustle around with a thousand different concerns and things to keep track of. This type of thinking won't help me, highest. This is only making it worse. Time to change the situation. Clearing her throat, most chatter died off, at least in the group around her. Conversations continued around the edges of the room. Normally, such things would be frowned upon heavily, to put it mildly, but in circumstances such as this, it wasn't that big of a deal. One aide stepped forward. Empress, update on human envoy. The messenger will be arriving in Paris in twenty minutes, and will arrive here in thirty-five. She thought of the update for a few seconds. Something caught her attention suddenly. The messenger... That's what the envoy team said. The empress mulled it over. Messenger, not a negotiator, diplomat. Just one. One moment, said the aide, signing a message over to the envoy team. The response was quick. Yes, empress, just one. The mood dropped. The empress turned to the gathered aides and attaches. Unless you're part of the human information group or directly related to the surrender proceedings, leave. Most of the gathered dispersed immediately, some looking thankfully to be able to leave the central enclave. The Empress shared an inkling of the desire, but duty calls. Human information, look up any and all references to messengers as a group in their culture and references to specific phrase, the messenger, or slight variations. Most of the remaining aides busily began looking through the tablets, searching for records. Those related to the surrender proceeding continued filling in the Empress while the human inf information group scoured the discussions that their findings. A few minutes later, the senior intelligence officer for the HI group stepped forward. The Empress waved him forward to the front of the assembled aides. Empress, messengers were historically a relatively protected class in warfare, theoretically. Not diplomats or a similar positions, they were just messengers a little more, usually sent by superior power, although from what we've seen, that is more of a guideline than a rule. In other words, not much of in and of itself to be concerned about, the Empress said relieved. There was a pregnant pause and several of the HI group flashing glances at one another. Of course there's more, the Empress thought. The most significant phrase relating to the messenger that we could find is, Don't shoot the messenger. Many messengers carry demands that, uh, that cause the leader receiving the message to kill the messenger. These caused even greater political strifes, usually met with harsh retribution. One more thing to mull over. Time was running short, but luckily this conundrum was easy to figure out. 
All cameras, recorders, anything and everything that can store what happens in this room are to be turned off. The Emperor ordered to nobody in particular. It would be done. She had no need to single anyone out. Quieter, she continued, sending a lone messenger to meet with the enemy's ruler. I figured that would be trouble, but that confirms it. This isn't a negotiation of surrender. They will demand it, and I can't refuse it. She continued privately. She had an image of the maintain at least, if she could maintain nothing else. None of her citizens would see what happened in the room if she could help it. Time was very short and passed faster than the Empress thought possible. Soon enough, the human messenger was at the palace, making his way towards the central enclave. While it probably wasn't necessary, the Empress ordered the rooms adjacent to the enclave filled with guards. If they were needed, they'd be in the room in seconds. Regardless, the protectors in the room could hold off any one-man assault. If they failed by some cataclysmic misfortune, the sheer weight of guards surrounding the enclave would drown anyone. And if anything did happen, the Empress would simply use the throne's escape mechanism and be whisked off to safety. None of that mattered, though, seeing it as a messenger. A single messenger, at that. Better safe than sorry, though, especially with humans. The Empress ascended the staircase, taking her place on the throne. No sooner had she done that than the aide spoke upward to her. Empress, the messenger is refusing to dismantle his power armor. Of course, this is fantastic. The Empress knocked mentally. He is refusing. He said there will not be another messenger and that turning him away will not set the correct course. It is a new armor design, not one we've captured before. There are a lot of unknowns. Not apparent weaponry, however. The Empress looked at the side, at the protectors, the doors leading into several rooms filled with men. Her hand rested gingerly, uh, just to the side of the palm-activated panel, which would activate the throne's protective measures. Off into space, to the aid again. We will get the server worth, just get him through. And so the messenger was on his way. The Empress continued updates of surrender details, lost tidbits of human intelligence knowledge. Within five minutes until the messenger arrived, she ordered all the aides out. This was time to focus and prepare. Time flies when you're on the verge of being a nervous wreck. Finally, the main door opened, agonizingly slow. In stepped a small retinue of attaches, followed by the human, followed by two more protectors. The protectors took their place where their brethren lining the sides of the room, far enough to not impose on anything in the middle, but close enough to impose rather quickly if they wanted to. The human messenger was at the center of attention, though. He indeed wore his power armor, and it was enormous. Human forces usually only offered the lowest levels of enhancements of power armors for their grunts, usually little more than a skeleton of machinery that simply made them somewhat stronger. Elite forces got true power armor, with significantly more emphasis on the armor aspect. The rare super soldier was always seen in massive version of the elite power armor, but this was pure incredible engineering. Humans were always smaller. The messenger stood eye to eye with the protectors, though. It wasn't only the size. This armor was ornate, detailed, eye-catching, beautiful, for lack of a better word. They really going to posture like that, the empress mused. A bit of a waste now, isn't it? The messenger walked towards the throne, seeming oblivious to the piercing eyes of the protectors tracking him. Just as the Empress was going to stop his advance, he mercifully stopped at his own. A silent moment passed before the Empress spoke. You truly did not need that armor here, human. I promise you, nothing will happen to you here. Humans say, don't shoot the messenger, and I intend to comply with that wisdom. The human grinned and bowed. The senior intelligence officer of the H.I. group, nearly hidden at the back of the room, gave a sign of affirmation at the human's gesture. Good. At least there was respect in the interaction. That is all well and good, Empress, but you understand my requirement. Letting my people's enemy inspect technology go into potentially harmful situation unprotected. Obviously, such things would not be acceptable. Besides, I'm not just a messenger. I am THE messenger. 
The Empress and everyone in the central enclave could hear the title when he spoke the words. Straightening upward, a serious look appeared on the messenger's face. Finally, the messenger... Empress of a Khan, I come before you today on behalf of humanity, your adversary and enemy. We have waged war, and now it is time to end. Humanity is your better, and that is undeniable. The Empress cut in. Obviously, such qualifiers as better refer to warfaring capacities, as it would be rash to refer to an entire species as wholly worse. The messenger's eyes twitched. It was visible to the protectors, who very slightly shifted to be in a better position to grab weapons. And it was visible forty feet away to the Empress herself. I believe this just got worse. The Empress's nervousness rose. Fortunately, though, the messenger's face smoothed and relaxed. He continued, Yes, Empress, I simply have to finish delivering my message, and humanity will give you one week for a response. Past such time with no response, the war will continue, and we will win it if it does. Very well, continue. The messenger once again bowed, but less than before. He also raised his arms, spraying out his hands, palm up. Senior intelligence officer for the HI group once again gave a quick sign of affirmation at the human gesture. Good, things are going. It was a very rapid series of small clicks in the quiet chamber. The human's fingers, which had so rested on the gesture, seemed to break all at once, straightening out, bending in unnatural angles, all pointed in random places, pointed towards the protectors. In a fraction of a second, the human went from signaling respect and deference to firing the highest caliber bullets humanity had to offer through the skulls of the Empire's elite troops. Every single one of them in the room, dead, all at once. The Emperor froze for half a second. The messenger had no such reservations, one arm reaching towards the Empress and then shooting forwards across the room. On its crusade towards the Empress, she gathered her wits and immediately pressed the throne's palm reader. As the messenger's grasping hand almost reached her, the biodefense's shield roared to life, destroying any living tissue that didn't belong to the Empress herself. The messenger's armor passed right through, grabbing the empress by the torso and began to recede to the messenger just as quickly as it shot from it. The empress was now being forcibly removed from a throne straight past the biodefense shields, but that was not the only defense mechanism. Two halves and an immense cylinder emerged from the ground and the ceiling centered around the throne. It was made of material even the empress didn't know, nigh impenetrable. According to the design, it would quickly close and seal away the Empress and would then open into a subterranean tunnel where she would be transported across the palace to the safe room. Instead, it closed as she was traversing where it would close. Two halves met as her lower legs were still inside and the two halves did meet fully and completely as designed. The Empress screamed in agony, dethroned and delimbed. The messenger had prepared for this exact set of circumstances down to the tenth of a second. He practiced it. There was no shortage of Archon war criminals to practice with. Truthfully, the messenger had mastered the setup and execution of his task within fifteen tries, but he had managed to need to practice eighty-two times. He had a message to send, and it would be sent exactly as intended. Right now, that called for the Empress to be dragged back to him instead of simply carried. A trail of blood was painted on the floor following her, with spurts of blood timed with a heartbeat sprayed messing up the clean line. The Empress, scratching against the floor and feeling the effects of losing half a limb, looked hurriedly at the doors of the adjacent room. Everyone she looked to was indicating locked. She looked back at the messenger, and the messenger was looking at her. There was no mask of calm anymore. The messenger bore the righteous fury of the entire human race focused onto one face. A few brave aides rushed the messenger, hopping onto the power armor, wildly hitting it with no effect. The messenger slowed, dragging the empress, and calmly grabbed each aide, one by one, and smashed them into the ground, following up with a punch to the head. He never needed to punch twice. At last, clear of the clinging bodies of the surrounding of unrecognizable ones, he once again sped up his humiliating capture of the Empress. There would be no more interruptions. Finally, 
she was at his feet. He slammed her back into the ground, knocking the breath from her lungs. She recovered just in time to gaze up at the messenger. And the message was clear, but the messenger always has to say the message to do his job right. He raised a fist to strike her, and intentionally lowered his power armor strengths to the Empress would hear the message in its entirety. You! He struck her slightly raised head, making it bounce on the floor. Arr! He struck her head again, cracking her nose. Hereby! He struck again. Disposed! And again. From! And again. Power! Two broken teeth this time. And! Another tooth and a jaw. Yar! The Empress wasn't aware of his message anymore. She was mercifully unconscious, but her ear still worked, so the message would continue. Right! Since the Empress was unconscious, the power armor strength was raised slightly. Two! Another strike on the jaw, shattering her already broken jaw. Life! Striking higher this time, the Empress's skull cracked her cheek. Is! Even higher, fracturing the brain case and crown of the head. Voided! One final punch directly to the center of the face. It simply crumpled and folded inward like paper mache. The messenger took a moment to calm himself, staring at his handiwork. With an approving grunt, he stood back up. But he kept his eyes on what remained of the Empress. Finally, he spoke again, calm and level. In the name of the 43 billion dead, 19 billion assaulted, and 12 billion mutilated, the Akon Empire is no more. The human union now is the administrator of all previous Akon territories and peoples. The 3rd, 7th, 8th, 9th, 14th, 40th, 45th, 58th, 72nd, 81st, and 48th Akon legions will surrender immediately and totally to face war crime charges. The execution of the leaders of those legions by their own men will reflect positively on the war crime proceedings. Failure to comply will result in termination. Finally, the messenger allowed himself one grin. It was a goodbye to the message he thought of and the flight down to the palace, with the horrified huddled masses of aides hiding in whatever itch of the corner of the room that they could get to watching. One small port in the power armor opened up, and he relieved himself onto the broken mass below him. He smirked, knowing everything that happened was recorded in high definition by his armor. Everyone would know what happened in this room. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode. And I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.